press the bell icon and never miss an update from ET Auto. Hello and welcome to ET Auto Big Byte. Today we have somebody very special, Mr. Oliver Sapin, the global head of mobility and transportation at one of the leading technology company, Deso System. Mr. Sapin, welcome to ET Auto. Thank you. Uh, we are sitting at the cusp of major transition where entire automotive value chain is changing. And Deso System is one of the most dominant player in this space. Can you tell us what kind of transformation, what kind of scope you of improvement or business do you see in India as we move on to the next level? Yeah, as you said, it's a very exciting transformation at the moment in the transportation and mobility sector and automotive in general. So, you know, Dassault System is a global company. We are already working with all the different OEMs, car OEM, truck OEM, two-wheelers OEM, uh, to provide solution uh, for innovation and for the end-to-end -end product development and manufacturing. So we are doing, uh, we're in this business for the, the last 30 years, more than 30 years. We are partnering uh, with the auto sector globally. So we are 16,000 globally. Uh, and and uh, one third of our business, 30% of our business is with automotive. So we are really uh, witnessing uh, uh, the current transformation. And I'm, I, I must say that uh, I see a lot of change uh, uh, in India. Uh, first of all, I see that uh, a lot of government support uh, in order to, uh, um, I mean, uh, make sure you, uh, you are back on track on emission, on uh, safety, uh, on CO2. And uh, I think it uh, triggers a massive transformation of the overall sector, not only uh, at OEM level, but also in the overall supply chain. So uh, we have now seen the beginning of the change. Uh, at this situation, what kind of business proposition do you see um, uh, as a major contributor to automotive industry when it comes to electrification, in uh, when it comes to BS6 implementation? Because you are the people who will help the industry in terms of designing and development of these two new uh, products. So what kind of business enhancement do you see in your company? Well, you need to, you need to look at uh, two, two aspects of the transformation. Uh, there is one link to the process. You know, in the for, for many years, uh, making a new car, uh, making a new truck uh, takes uh, an amount of time uh, which is five to seven years if we are building a complete new platform. And you cannot survive, you cannot be any more competitive uh, if we are not changing the process itself. Uh, so there is a huge transformation uh, for many actors to take the end-to-end -end process and again to look at every step of the development from uh, styling, strategy, portfolio, configuration, engineering, manufacturing, retail, marketing. Uh, so you need to look at all these processes. And what we are proposing is a, a platform approach to make sure that all the different stakeholders can collaborate together to accelerate and to make sure you reduce the, the cycle time. Yeah, we are heading towards BS6. India is the only company that is going to skip BS5. Uh, Europe is BS6. You have worked there. Going from BS4 to BS6, what are the elements that the industry took, uh, should look forward to in terms of, because cost is very important in India. So how can we design and develop a BS6 engine, which is low cost, which doesn't give much burden to the buyers as well as manufacturers? No, the, I use, I, I Have you done some kind of study or some kind of... Of course, of yeah, course so we did. Share a bit. Of course we did. First of all, we're involved in most of the actors in Europe and, U and uh, who did the Euro 6 uh, type of uh, engine. As you rightly said, I think in India uh, you have an immense challenge because India has been a very cost effective country, uh, uh, providing affordable trucks and cars uh, to the market. Uh, so you need uh, to rapidly uh, go to Euro 6 and at the same time keep the cost effective. Uh, I think we can help a lot in this domain. Uh, especially on simulations, uh, because all these uh, Euro 6 uh, compliant engines are requiring uh, a lot of simulation, virtual simulation, 
uh, uh, physical simulation that need to be managed. And uh, uh, this is where, for example, we help uh, local players like Ashok Leland. Uh, we did uh, announce yesterday that we are partnering with Ashok Leland uh, to manage all the things related to uh, verification and validation. And it helped this kind of company how, how to move to Euro 6. How does solution help in cutting down the development cost? Uh, what is the latest development on that? Suppose a manufacturer wants to move to BS6. So what, what kind of solution you have? Like uh, six months, one year, how much time will it take somebody to transform BS4 to BS6? Well, you can, uh, you, first of all, you can shrink the development from 30 to, 30 to 50 percent in terms of time and cost from a pure development standpoint. Uh, what are the key elements that is helping do that? Collaboration. First of all, you help to put uh, all the engineers together because when you have to simulate a complex engine, it involves a lot of different experts on a global basis. So you help to get all these stakeholders, all the engineering on the, on the same platform in order to collaborate. And so the time you were losing in terms of finding the right information, connecting with the expert, uh, uh, and now you are, you are shrinking this time and you can really accelerate uh, the development. Oliver, you have worked uh, with a lot of Indian manufacturers. What kind of experience you had? What are the roadblocks if you see uh, among Indian manufacturers? And what are the opportunities that you find here? What are the positive of Indian manufacturers and how they can fix the challenges and how they can leverage the positive that they have? Uh, I think what we experience at this point is, uh, first of all, you have uh, a lot of very smart company and smart engineers. So at OEM level, I mean, the, the partnership we have uh, with all the different car, trucks, buses, OEM are at, at, at the right level. I think the roadblocks, or let's say the challenges now, is to implement that on the full ecosystem, including the value chain. Uh, you know, I think in terms of maturity, what's happening in the supply chain, what's happening in the different manufacturing plants, I think uh, the overall industry need to raise in terms of maturity on the, on the overall value chain. This is why I think the, the, the same thing we are doing currently in engineering, we need to adopt it also within the manufacturing value chain. And uh, so it's all about end-to-end -end process, digitalization of uh, manufacturing processes, digitalization of plants. Uh, so this is the next uh, roadblocks I think that we have to face. You acknowledged the engineering prowess of India and many over uh, global companies have done it. They have made India as global hub for their uh, engineering support system. What's Dassault's plan for India? How do you look at India when it comes to your global uh, roadmap? Uh, first of all, we have uh, already a large presence in India. Uh, we have offices in all the, the big uh, cities of India. We, all, we are also using India as a hub for us in terms of development, in terms of services. Uh, so this is also an advantage uh, for us because we are really close to our customer base. So now we have seen that there is uh, going to be major demand with these changes and uh, people like you will have a lot of business opportunity. Is there any further investment plan for you in India? Yes, around electromobility, electric vehicle, is the next big thing. Uh, I, I saw that uh, also the government was very pushy towards 2030. Uh, they stated at some point of time that uh, they would like to see only electric uh, vehicle uh, at this time. Uh, I think it's going to be a long journey uh, because electric vehicle uh, is a, a complete new kind of uh, vehicle architecture. Of course, you get battery, you get uh, electric motors, but it also impacts fundamental architecture of the chassis, the body. Uh, so it, there is a lot of engineering investment to be done. And we really want to partner uh, with uh, car makers, truck makers in this area, uh, because we have a, a lot of experience, especially because within this new electric vehicle uh, uh, trends, there are new actors, new startups. You may have heard about uh, a uh, new startup in the Silicon Valley, in China, but also we found some of them in India. Uh, uh, new companies which are bringing uh, 
new uh, new technology, new skills, and we are working with all of them. We so work with, for example, you, you of course Tesla. We are working for them for more than ten years, but we have other companies like uh, Neo, uh, Faraday Future, uh, and so we we uh, we are learning a lot with them. So when you talk about partnering, what kind of association you look at? Is it customer uh, a relationship? or you want to go beyond probably sign a joint venture with somebody and start manufacturing also do you plan to do that well uh, no the in fact the first thing we are doing with them is to provide our platform 3d expense platform in order to uh, to manage uh, their business you talked about investing in india what's your specific investment plan for india can you reveal some uh, well, we cannot. Uh, we the the growth is is strong here. I've heard about announcement about uh, more than eight uh, percent economical uh, uh, growth in India. So for us, the growth will be the same for our own workforce. So the first investment we are doing in people, we are we are investing in people in teams. Uh, our teams will grow in India so uh, to support our plan customer. To hire in the next few years. Uh, we are not communicating figures about that, but uh, I mean, uh, certainly. Any, any uh, 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 figure that estimated number that you can. You know, in in the automotive globally and also in India, we are we are uh, growing double digit, so it's going to be uh, this kind of growth also for our skills. Okay, uh, in India, we do not have so far. We do not have any battery manufacturers, so is it very complex? What are the roadblock? Why people are not coming forward in manufacturing batteries, especially lithium-ion batteries? I'm talking about. Uh, can you put a word or explain what are the hindrances and how these Indian people can think of manufacturing battery in India? So, uh, battery is complex, uh, and especially at this point of times, we see that there is a challenge with battery in terms of range, in terms of uh, cost. Uh, but it's changing rapidly. I mean, uh, people are investing a lot on battery. Uh, you need to build skills uh, from engineering standpoint, and the skills start with material science. Because as you rightly said, it's going to be about lithium, it's going to be about cobalt, it's going to be a, a lot of uh, a combination of material that will make your battery efficient. So the first thing we are investing is into material science. So we provide to battery makers uh, uh, tools to start from material science and then a simulation of battery cell, simulation of battery pack, and simulation of the entire uh, integration of the battery pack within the vehicle. Uh, we have seen there has been some development in sodium ion also. So have you uh, uh, done some study around that, sodium ion batteries? Uh, not ourselves, uh, but we are working with a uh, lot of battery players uh, which are investigating uh, a new type of, of, uh, of, of battery. We have also a center of expertise. For example, we have a center of expertise in Munich, in Germany. Uh, a, a group of people who are uh, working with companies like BMW on, uh, on, on existing and new kind of battery to accelerate the development and to find some... Uh, uh, so will that bring down the cost, do you think, uh, sodium ion, if sodium ion happens? It will improve the cost, it will improve the efficiency of the battery, the performance. So yes, we are working on all fronts. So how far are we from bringing that to the production? When do you expect it to be implemented in the next two, three years? Which one? Sodium ion batteries. Uh, I don't know about that one, but uh, uh, in terms of production, but uh, uh, you see that now there are uh, new plants uh, doing a very large volume of battery everywhere. Uh, so I think it's a, it's a right strategy for uh, India to invest in that. I think th what the strength of India is also on the two wheelers market. I mean, you are strong. You are uh, like the first volume uh, motorcycle maker in the world. So this expertise, I think, will bring maybe uh, a new area of research and competitive advantage of India in the battery business. Because in, in the car, um, people are looking at uh, a very large battery set to have the right range. 
in the motorcycle uh, and scooter business it could be different you people are talking about battery swapping uh, systems so uh, i think it's a real advantage locally uh, uh we uh let's come back to manufacturing process uh, can you give some uh hints on what are the mega trends in terms of man using iot in manufacturing processes in automobile industry and what kind of learning indian counterpart can have for that well manufacturing is changing a lot because first of all it comes from the customer expectation uh, a customer wants a personalized product so this industry has made it uh, um, a car to be very cost effective very affordable so it has been a, a lot of volume cars uh, and and more and more um, manufacturing is moving to be much more agile much more flexible so i how iot is helping it uh, you know uh because the entire monitoring of the manufacturing execution system uh, uh, need to be done in such a way so that when you have a new customer order it should trigger immediately uh, the change in the plant and also you need to make sure that at any point of time where you have a change in on the assembly line or when you have an issue or when you have a new customer order you want immediately to trigger uh, uh, some impact uh, uh, with all the different stakeholders. So uh, using IoT can you project a uh, cost effectiveness by or time effectiveness uh, in terms of production of an automobile product or a component how much we can save time or uh, improve accuracy or we can save cost what is your projection for next few years uh, it's hard to uh, to get figures but um, uh, 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 for sure uh, the overall manufacturing uh, transformation is going to help a lot of cost and is going to make because there is so much new innovation in the car as we said about uh, electric car but also uh, autonomous car Any kind of capability number that you have in mind oh it's in terms of cost yeah uh, it i think it will reduce the cost of manufacturing uh, by the range of of 20 to 30 percent by what time I mean, it's already happening from now to the next uh, five years. Uh, it's going, it's going to be uh, uh, um, very effective. It depends on the rate of adoption uh, by the different plants. Thank you. Thank you for talking to ET Auto. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much.